May I come in, sirs? Come. What's your name? A very good afternoon, sir. So I am Srishti Dabas. Take. Thank you, sir. <coughs> so Srishti Dabas is working with the Reserve <coughs> Bank of India. Yes, sir. What is your job like there? What do you do? So I am working with the Human Resource Management Department, mm -hmm. and there I look after the performance appraisals of all the employees of the bank. Mm -hmm. Okay. Uh, is there anything interesting in the job? Or is it a routine job? So mostly the work that I do is routine and well defined. Mm -hmm. Yet still there always is a scope to bring about more uh, improvement in the process. Mm -hmm. So for instance the appraisal uh, system of the bank. So that also we have been revamping. There must be some form there. No? Appraisal form must be there. Uh, yes sir. So there again we did have the opportunity mm -hmm. to bring improvements in it by adding behavioral components. Behavioral mm -hmm. competencies. Mm -hmm. So, but if you wish to add any issue, any topic there, then it will require approval from very high up. <coughs> you can't add it that okay, I have written one more line. Henceforth, yes. it will be like that, is it not? Uh, Who will indeed, approve it? Sir, it uh, varies case to case basis. Mm -hmm. So, some cases go up to uh, the CGM level, some up till ED level, some till deputy governor level, mm -hmm. and very few till uh, governor, of course. Okay. So, uh, as of now, you are working as grade B. Yes. Yeah. After the grade A, grade B, there is grade A. So then it's grade C. It's oh, quite I opposite see. there. Oh, I see. The other way round. Yes, sir. So after B, this is grade C. Yes, sir. So grade C monthly salary will be how much? Uh, sir, about grade C, I'm not aware of. Never mm -hmm. checked uh, for the Never higher. Checked. Yes. Sir. Or is it because the career progression you don't look up to grade C at all? You look somewhere else outside RBI? Sir, currently definitely looking mm -hmm. up to becoming an IAS officer. So. Mm -hmm. Okay. And uh, you had studied uh, political science and international relations? Yes, sir. Is it not? So do you keep in touch what is happening around? Yes, sir. Mm -hmm. On the electoral board, what were the reasons for Supreme Court uh, declaring the concerned law as unconstitutional? So the primary reason was uh, that the system of electoral bonds is opaque and there is lack of transparency. Mm -hmm. The right of information that citizens have, that you was... You say it is opaque, but remember when the government had placed this bill before the parliament, they say it is for introducing transparency. Is the Indeed, just sir. opposite to that? How come? So, if you say it is opaque, that uh, there must have been, uh, you have to justify that. Hmm. So, when the government introduced it, the idea was to curb uh, black money. Mm -hmm. uh, but uh, the reason for it was that since it will be uh, an online transaction, mm -hmm. um, so uh, more digitized, more uh, organized in that sense. Mm -hmm. However, the contention that Supreme Court found was that. Uh, the donations made by people are not being disclosed. Mm. So hence it hampers the right to information and also the test of proportionality I believe sir is not being met. The very purpose for which uh, electoral bonds were introduced mm. for curbing black money that is not being uh, fulfilled hence the Supreme Court declared it unconstitutional. Okay. Why Supreme Court was angry on State Bank of India on uh, this issue of electoral bond? They were very angry on SBI. What was the issue? So, for not uh, releasing the details, as Supreme Court had asked uh, SBI to release the data to, they, to ECI. Did they say so that you release the data in public? So, SBI was required to give it to the Election Commission of India, mm -hmm. post which the Election Commission of India would have made mm -hmm. it public. Mm -hmm. uh, then, uh, SBI demanded. Then what for was the problem? So, SBI demanded for an increase in the deadline. They asked to give 30th June. What is the reason? I mean, they must have cited some good reason for that. So they cited that uh, they require time to uh, bring, to understand the linkages between the amount do uh, donated and the people who have donated it. So mm -hmm. they wanted some time to uh, properly structureize and collate all the data. Mm -hmm. Okay. You had been... Uh, uh, in Delhi for more, more or less here only, is it not? You are not outside. Yes. So as an insider of Delhi, 
do you think uh, the police in Delhi has saw uh, seen improvements in technology which is being utilized for policing? If so, what are the examples of that? Inputs of technology into police investigation or policing. Yes, sir. So certainly there have been improvements uh, mm -hmm. with regards to Delhi government also. Mm -hmm. There has been focus on training of the po police personnel, mm -hmm. specifically the constable and sub uh, head constable. What is the question? Uh, question is examples of yes, illustrations sir. of inserting technology for police investigation. Examples. Uh, yes, sir. Mm -hmm. So, uh, very recently artificial intelligence was used mm -hmm. to resolve a murder case. Mm -hmm. so, so, that becomes a prime example of uh, usage of technology into investigation. Even it has been used in forensics. Mm -hmm. Anything else? So, the uh, CCTNS system, mm -hmm. the criminal reporting uh, database mm -hmm. that uh, keeps the uh, data of all the criminals, the crimes. CCTNS. Yes, sir. But there is no word like uh, D or B database. So, what is that? It stands for what? CCTNS. Uh, so, exactly, I am uh, unable mm -hmm. to recollect, but it relates something to centralized uh, crime tracking network. Ah, so something, something like maybe that. Maybe something like that. Yes, sir. But what did it do to a police station? Sir, uh, it is easing the mm -hmm. uh, collation of details mm -hmm. about the criminals and crimes. And uh, so to for begin with, it has automated FIR registration at a police station. Uh, yes, it does make it, uh, you can say, concurrent. Okay. Yes, sir. sir. EFIRs have been introduced. Not EFIR is different. CCTN is different. Yes, sir. Thank this, you, sir. Describe to us the administrative structure of Delhi. <coughs> sir, as per the uh, 69th Constitutional Amendment Act, Article 239 AA was introduced, which established a legislative assembly for Delhi which will have an elected government headed by the chief minister and um, simultaneously there is a lieutenant governor so uh, so this is the governance structure. that's it so besides okay, okay. So the prime minister inaugurated uh, part of the dwarka expressway yes sir it was yesterday two days ago what is the significance of it for the prime minister to have inaugurated it so it's a major infrastructural uh, development that has taken place. It will boost connectivity. Even uh, 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 say Delhi has been connect linked to Gurugram also. So uh, that so basically it's the connectivity boost. Gurugram linking Delhi to Gurugram. That's so all. True. So other regions also. For instance, recently Delhi made it. Uh, uh, regional uh, transportation highway was also. This has nothing to do with made it. This is the Dwarka Expressway. Yes, sir. Anyway, now staying with Delhi, yes. tell us how does one deal with encroachments? It's a terrible mess. Encroachments in Delhi. Encroachments on public lands. Yes, sir. So the first and foremost thing uh, that is required is to have a clear database of the land, the ownership. Well, you can For see that it regard, the, you go to Karolbag, go to Chandni Chowk, you'll see encroachments. Yes, sir. So that perhaps is because of the still prevalence of Laldora lands. For that, the Swamitva scheme has been introduced by the government, and that I believe will bring. No, Karolbag, there is no Laldora there. Laldora is there in Mahipalpur. I can understand. Yes, sir. Other than Laldora. So it would also be because of the huge immigrants that... Uh, now how do you deal with it? We know the causes, but how do you deal with it? If you were in the MCD or in the left wing governor's office, how would you deal with it? So by ensuring that the record management of the land is there in place, then if such encroachments are made, then... then um, making sure that the illegal encroachments are removed and those people are also rehabilitated too. How that, how that is the key, rehabilitating them, giving them alternative spaces. Is that easy? 
so it would be difficult given the space crunch that Delhi so already So bulldozer is. policy follow the UP example bulldoze the encroachment is that an option so i think it shouldn't be because but that it's hampers been, it's, it's been there in up and parts of haryana also that's the only way to remove encroachment otherwise you remove them they come back again so uh, i believe that goes against the rule of law even supreme court had said that right of right to housing is a fundamental right no, under no to give them proper yeah. notification go as go as per the law and still bulldoze them so uh, again sir i believe a rehabilitation plan a proper well defined policy needs to be in place we still don't have a concrete policy in that regard okay <coughs> you are a kathak dancer do you perform yes sir where do you perform normally um uh, so whichever function i get the opportunity to i did perform during my college days even uh, in rbi i did get a chance to very good so tell us the other classical dance forms so there is with the states yes sir. so mohini attam and kathakali from kerala kuchipudi from andhra manipuri from manipur satriya dance from assam so odissi from uh, odisha what is the difference between kuchipudi and bharatanatyam so the primary difference would be pertaining to the use of body language the use of torso is uh, more prevalent in bharatanatyam i believe as compared to kuchipudi so apart from that that there would be certain differences in their costumes mudras mudras also yes what is the difference so particularly about the mudras of those dance forms i won't be aware so oh, no okay my last question what do you understand by dp dp dpi digital public so digital public infrastructure is seen as a a public good which is provided by the government of india to enhance the digitization and uh, financial inclusion of the people Example. that <coughs> give yes. us some examples so that occurs primarily through the use of upi then other uh, initiatives like digi locker coven uh, account aggregators um, so even e diksha how is it, uh, how is this important for the indian economy its contribution to the indian economy what is its contribution today and uh, maybe 5 years from now so currently we see that 46% of uh, india's transactions are digital so uh, around uh, rupees 2000 lakh crore rupees transactions are done digitally of which upi itself contributes 140 lakh crores so so the contribution is primarily uh, by enhancing financial inclusion by um, resolving the issue of change management which is there with regards to cash by increasing the effic efficiency of various digital payment methods so these would be the thank points. you thank you sir Miss Shristi Davas. Yes, sir. I see from your draft that from August twenty-one to October twenty-one, you worked as the state coordinator and project monitoring unit at the National Institute of Social Defence. Yes, sir. Was that through a competitive exam? How did you get this job? Uh, yes, sir. It was a competitive exam. And uh, after that, you worked in the in the RBI. and that job also you got through competitive exam indeed sir so why is it that you didn't think of appearing for the civil services earlier your first shot was in 2023 yes sir why were you going for the other options if ultimately you had the civil services in mind so for me the uh, primary motivation of giving the other examinations was to get financial independence first that was really important sir for uh, myself as well as my family you could so, you have appeared in 2021 sir in the same year i got the um, other jobs simultaneously so that means you missed out on two years of seniority in government you could have appeared at that time do you think that uh, something held you back other than financial reasons because you could have competed in 2020 
or whenever, when you got the first job. So I find, I'm curious, why did you not appear for the civil services at that stage? You could have uh, qualified and become financially independent. So have you thought about this whole thing? Why should you have appeared? Should you not have appeared? <coughs> Sir, it was always in my head that I want to give my first attempt as the best shot and uh, usually it happens that people are not much prepared and still they go for an attempt but, but I really Mr. wanted... Shristi, you know, uh, when you are not working, when you are free, you study and prepare full time. When you are in a job, you can't put in that kind of effort. So you have been working since you got your first job. Does that leave you with so much time? For instance, when you were with the Reserve Bank of India, was it leaving you? Is it leaving you so much time to prepare? So, in my humble opinion, uh, I uh, hold a quite a different opinion, sir. So, I believe uh, the efficiency that I uh, get while preparing, while working simultaneously, so was was much more, because I was confident that I uh, I'm working. The confidence that I gain by interacting with the people in my office that again boosts up so sir uh, individually work uh, studying at home that i think creates a lot more pressure all right now your optional paper is political science and international relations yes, i'm sure you follow the ongoing international events uh, what were the abraham accords and what is their importance So these uh, accords were meant for Israel-Arab normalization of ties, okay. brokered by the United States of America. So which countries signed the Abraham Accords? Yes, sir. So between Israel, UAE, Bahrain and uh, Sudan, sir. If Sudan I'm and one other country joined so, later. So Morocco. Correct. So and how many Arab countries have normalized relations with Israel till now? Total. Sir, a total figure, I wouldn't know. Sir. Which was the first? So first would be, uh, sir, Egypt, I guess, Correct. in 1967. 19? 19? 67, sir. No, then there was a 73 war. How could it have been in 67? This uh, uh, Yom Kippur, Kippur war was in 73. Mm. Then these accords were 78. So Egypt normalized 78. Jordan, 19, mm. 2001. Then came the Camp David Accords. Yes. Do you Thank think you, Hamas was worried? why so many Arab countries were normalizing relations with Israel and that could have been a motive for it to launch the terrorist attack on October 7. What is your view? I'm asking for your opinion. So perhaps this could be one of the interpretations if we look at, look at it that way. There would be uh, different opinions, uh, different apprehensions, uh, so might be this could be one sir. Do you follow Prime Minister's foreign visits? Uh, sir, I try to. Uh, last month he went to some countries. What, which countries and what was the significance of each visit? So primarily it was the UAE where the BAPS temple was inaugurated and that's a great boost for the soft power of India. Did he go to any sir, other country? Uh, sir, Qatar. Uh, and what was the main reason for his visit to Qatar? Uh, sir, it was during that time that uh, the eight Indian Navy personnel, those uh, were relieved from Qatar. So, primarily it was that diplomatic channel through which uh, our Honorable Prime go Minister negotiated. Did to Qatar before the release of those eight naval officers or retired naval officers or did he go to Qatar after? That's important. Yes, sir. Sir, I am forgetting it currently. Alright. Now, you were the organizer or something like that of the youth coordinator, global youth coordinator for India Russia Youth Forum. Yes. Sir. <clears throat> Which country do you think is a better friend of India, America or Russia? Sir, I believe both because the very policy of India is of strategic autonomy and we are trying to get best out of all relations, trying to build uh, good relations with as many countries as we are able to and um, get benefits from each. So as has been uh, uh, said by Honorable Foreign Minister S. J. Shankar sir that we follow the transactional approach whereby say if we are getting oil imports from Russia 
we are further uh, diversifying our defense uh, inputs uh, and getting now, it from USA. Prime Minister had told President Putin that this is not the era of war. What can Prime Minister do in addition to get Putin to end the war? <coughs> can he do anything? <coughs> So certainly I feel uh, he can. As we even saw that uh, there were threats from Russia for the use of <coughs> using of nuclear weapons. So it was even then that USA took the help of India and it was then that the Indian Prime Minister talked to the Russian counterpart and it was it a great feat. It said in the media, there is media speculation yeah. in the United States. Of course our government has not said anything. Uh, yes sir. But okay. <coughs> he was able to persuade Putin not to use nuclear weapons. Can yes. he persuade <coughs> sorry, Putin not to pursue the war? <coughs> I'm sorry, I don't know what has happened. Sir, given the personal equation between our Prime Minister and the <coughs> Russian counterpart, Sir, I feel uh, there can be the usage of dialogue and diplomacy, which our Prime Minister can use to even... Thank you. Uh, I just take a minute. Yes. Srishti Devas, <coughs> tell me, what is the difference between this is censor motion and no confidence motion in the parliament? Sir, the no confidence motion uh, leads to the fall of the government, that is against the entire government, but the censor motion can also be against certain ministers and it does not lead to the fall of the government as such. But no confidence motion leads to the fall of government only way if it is successful. Uh, yes, sir. But you are telling it always. Yeah. Sir, if uh, no confidence motion is passed, <coughs> then... The censor motion, then what is the use? Sir, it is a tool to uh, bring about certain uh, deficiencies if mm. have been there on part of certain ministers. Okay. So, sir, a tool to set accountability, I believe. Correct. Then tell me, what is this MP in RBI there is a MPC. Yes, sir. What is the mandate of MPC and uh, what is the constitution? So it is the Monetary Policy Committee, yeah. which uh, basically uh, uh, sets the repo rate, the monetary policy yeah. for the entire economy, and the composition includes the uh, three members are there from the side of RBI and three from the government. So, headed by the governor of RBI and there is also the so deputy minister who heads the monetary policy department. Then there is a? So, the deputy governor, uh, uh, sorry, governor, deputy governor who heads so the... So, in total they become eight? Uh, sir, of the three people from RBI, the governor and deputy governor are included. So, sir, three, three from both sides, and total who six. who is the third person from RBI? Sir, it is nominated, uh, not fixed as such okay. changes. <coughs> then it is basically... What is your opinion, whether it is dominated by the government or by the RBI? RBI's autonomy of the RBI is not affected by this? Sir, I believe it is not dominated by any because the decision making is taken by consensus and only in case of a deadlock, the veto power of the governor is used. So, so the governor is from the government only, isn't it? So after becoming the governor, I believe he or she acts independently. He changes. He or she changes. Yeah. Uh, so uh, the ultimate aim of both the government and RBI is the public good. And once a governor is appointed, so I believe he or she works independently and autonomously. Sometimes there is a difference of opinion. Earlier one governor resigned. <coughs> and uh, what was the issue at that time? Any idea? I am forgetting the name of the governor at that time. Uh, sir, it was Urijit Patel, sir. Uh, I think even <coughs> Raghuram Rajan, sir. It is said that... Uh, Before Raghuram Rajan. Anyhow, that is not relevant. You just tell me that dispute was something about transfer of some money from RBI to government. Yes, sir. Sir, about the transfer of surplus yeah. uh, dividends from RBI to yeah, the yeah, government. Yeah. First time, I think, in the history. Uh, sir, when I was reading about the governor, sir, it has happened earlier also, uh, in the 20th century also. So, I am forgetting <coughs> the name of the governor then, but okay. uh, it has. So, if such a dispute arises, what is the way out? 
how it should be resolved sir i would say that uh, communication and uh, uh, arriving at consensus should be the way out both sides need to sit together talk have dialogue and ultimately abide to the constitutional morality that should be the uh, foundation of taking any decision or it should be taken to the parliament um so i don't think it should be taken to the parliament because there then are some mini then mini parliaments also what are they called so the parliamentary committees should it be taken to the parliamentary committee because that that can that uh, comprises of even opposition and all that yes sir so an expert committee uh, might be created in that regard sir for uh, better uh, view points from different stakeholders already there is a committee for finance matter there must be some committee yes sir or public accounts committee so those committees uh, their mandate i think is quite different sir they are working for the post facto uh, analysis yeah. of the government's expenditures so sir their mandate i think would be different a separate uh, expert committee separate committee yeah. might be sir or the we can add the mandate mandate to them and so if that possible we can whatever it is and tell me mpc target basically this repo rate they decide and uh, yes sir <coughs> what happens if repo rate is uh, basically increased so if the repo rate is increased then the impact is that the money supply in the economy reduces, reduces. and that leads to the decrease in inflation in the economy so decrease in the inflation yes sir and what are the repercussion of that uh so what on what happens otherwise elsewhere sir if the repo rate is not increased if repo rate is increased yes sir. inflation comes down yes sir what happens to the growth gdp uh sir in that regard rbi tries to maintain a balance between both and even the preamble of rbi says that uh inflation the price stability is kept in check why gdp decreases if repo rate is increased so because the money supply is reducing mm -hmm. so the money reaching the people the money in circulation reduces so ultimately the purchasing of goods and services reduces mm -hmm. so however uh, since inflation also has to be target keeping in mind the objectives of growth and so investment also become costly money loan taking by the corporates and yes sir since uh, interest rate is being increased yeah chief election commissioner and election commissioner act is there 2022 yes sir. 2023 who are the committee members for selection for selecting these people so the selection committee comprises of the prime minister mm -hmm. the leader of opposition and one cabinet minister as nominated by the prime minister and in your opinion whether this is a fair arrangement the one they have done it this kind of composition for free and fair election because we want it what is your opinion so if i were to say uh, so i would say that since the last 70 years it has been working solely uh, by the appointments made by the prime minister so so in that regard certainly it's an achievement that now we have come up with a committee mm -hmm. it will be better uh, question is not comparison question is fairness or not whether it is fair or not once we have, why do we have why have we changed even now it is uh, as good as that because uh, whatever prime minister wants can do it he can ask his minister to say whatever he says so it is a contention and uh, it is being debated Re in that regard result is same where is the contention there is no contention outcome is same Uh, so the supreme court the committee composition that supreme court had given that included the cji instead of the cabinet minister rather than holding so, the ear from straight way by the right hand right ear you hold the left ear by the right hand circuitous way yes sir anyhow so we need uh, further improvements uh, certainly in that regard i'm not asking whether we need a improvement i'm a question was only whether it is fair or not So you are you are not replying to that. Either it is fair or unfair, one of the two. Anyhow, we'll discuss so the, it. We'll yes, discuss sir. it. Then your uh, 
What is your opinion about uh, three most important police reforms? So the very uh, purpose for which the criminal, uh, new criminal uh, laws have been introduced is uh, justice first and citizens first. So it eases the process of... Uh, How does it uh, so happen the, like that, justice first and citizen first? Yes, sir. So for instance, EFIR has been introduced that will aid the women mm -hmm. for uh, uh, approaching the police for okay. making any complaints. So secondly, <coughs> the provisions related to sedition and even mob lynching, so they have been added. So that's a step in the right direction. There will be certain deterrent effect because of that. Bail has been made difficult. Uh, sir, I'll have to read upon it. I'm okay, not aware of the something. provision. Okay, then uh, <coughs> three points. What is the? What do you think about the reforms in Delhi? Delhi schools. Educational reform in Delhi schools. Yes, sir. So, uh, one, the curriculum has been made more inclusive. There is teaching of the happiness curriculum, even teachings of Ambedkar ji are being taught. Secondly, sir, new universities have been established. Three new universities have been added, including the uh, Delhi Teachers uh, University, and Delhi teachers university. university and Delhi Sports University. And one is the Skill and Entrepreneurship University. So, sir, that uh, en enhances the scope of education. Sir, so thirdly, the smart education that is being brought about, smart classes are being introduced. So, sir, so these are some okay, of the. Thank you. Thank you. So, sir. Srishti, uh, yesterday, uh, were you witness to that uh, road show for Prime Minister? Uh, sir, I couldn't have a you look at it. You couldn't. I see. And uh, what are the uh, special attributes of this uh, highway? which has been inaugurated yesterday. Something spectacular, something special. Uh, sir, I'll have to read upon it. Mm. Not aware of the exact... Okay. So, Srishti, we conclude our conversation with you. You can wait outside. We'll call you again. Thank you, sir. Okay. Thank you, sir.